Big brake kits can be one of the most expensive mods you can make to a car. They can easily cost thousands of dollars, and if you go overboard, you can be looking at tens of thousands of dollars for an entire setup. But I have what I think might just be the best bang for the buck big brake kit for your E36 or E46 BMW, hands down. In fact, I think if you're careful about it, you could have this exact same big brake setup, front and rear, for less than a thousand bucks. So let me show you how to pull it off. Let's talk about all the parts you're gonna need. Let's install some brakes. And I can't wait to show you guys how this thing turned out. In the last E36 episode, we installed a bunch of new parts on the back end of the car, including new brake rotors. But you guys held my feet to the fire when I installed dirty old E36 M3 calipers. And admittedly, that was pretty fair. On the front end, we didn't even install new brakes because it turns out you can't fit E36 M3 brakes to an E36 without M3 knuckles. So to the benefit of both of us, I scrapped those brake plans entirely and went down a new path. Yesterday, this box arrived from my friend Assad Hussein from Canada, and inside are the parts that should make for a very good but very inexpensive big brake kit. And no, we're not using cheap or no-name or knockoff brake calipers. We're using the real deal, Brembo's. These four piston calipers come off of a Porsche 996 911, but they're also found on the Boxster S and the Cayman S. And if you're looking for some to call your own, these are the part numbers that you'll need. You can find them on eBay, your local junkyard, or a number of other sources if you decide to look. Now, I opted to have mine completely rebuilt. Everything from new seals to new bleeders, new hoses and lines, you name it, everything here is as good as new. And I also had them refinished in yellow, because I think it'll look perfect with the silver paint. But the calipers are only useful if you have this box to go with them. Here, we have a delivery from Rally Road, and Rally Road specializes in custom brackets that will adapt these calipers to your BMW E36 or E46, whether it's an M3 or not. These billet steel brackets make this a bolt-on affair and require more or less no major modification to the car in order to install them. Rally Road has also removed all of the guesswork, providing the necessary shims so you can center the calipers properly, and if you want them, they'll also provide all of the brake lines that you need as well. And if you're new to this video series, these parts are going on my own S54 swapped E36 as part of an overall complete restoration. Now let's get this stuff installed. Removal of all of the factory parts is as straightforward as it gets. I removed the lines and then the calipers and then the brake rotors to give us access to install all of our new parts. It's probably been 10 years since I removed the calipers from this thing, but because it's a rust-free car, everything came out nice and easy. The first step towards installation is the only modification required for this brake conversion, and that requires grinding down some of the casting marks on the end of the knuckle. With those out of the way, the adapter bracket will bolt right on. And for anybody out there with fears about using an adapter for your brake calipers, let me tell you that pretty much any radially mounted caliper will use a bracket just like this one. And because Rally Road provides the torque specs for all of the parts, I got out the torque wrench and torqued things down properly. And that brings us to brake rotors. We've got a couple of different ones to choose from because this kit does have a bit of variability to it. I want to clear 17-inch wheels, so for the fronts, I've chosen drilled E46 M3 comp pack rotors. They're not the cheapest option, but I like the added performance benefits here. For the rear, we're using E38 750 rotors, a simple off-the-shelf part that should allow us to retain the function of a parking brake once I install one. Both of these rotors will go directly onto the E36 hubs without any modification whatsoever, although you will need an E46 rotor retaining screw if you want to hold the rotor on without the lug bolts. And then comes the calipers. They simply drop right onto the Rally Road brackets and make for a very simple installation. While you will have to reuse your original brake caliper bolts for this kit, all of the other hardware you need is included. And within minutes, the fronts are completely finished and they look incredible. I'm really happy with the outcome of this and I think the Brembos are gonna look killer under the HRE wheels once we get the entire package all buttoned up. 
At the back of the car, the process is pretty much identical. We're simply gonna rip all of the old parts off, figure out what we'll do with them at another time, and instead fit up the whole new brake system. Nothing at the tail end of the car needs any modification though. Instead, this time the bracket will simply bolt right into place, followed up by the brake rotor and then the caliper. I'll have to order some parts so that we do have a functioning parking brake underneath these rear rotors, but I'm going to worry about that further down the line. I don't even have parking brake cables on the car right now. Rear caliper installation is as easy as the front. Simply line up the bolts to the bracket and drop it all into place. Ignoring the bleeding procedure and installing the brake lines themselves, this installation is as easy as it gets. I installed all four corners in about one hour. There is one other thing before we button this up. We're gonna need some wheel spacers for multiple reasons. One is we need to clear the calipers themselves with the back of the wheel, and two is I'd like to dial in the wheel fitment and get it sitting just right. My friends at H&R sent over a few different sets, 10s, 15s, and 20s, so that we have some room to play with so that we can get everything sitting just the way we want it to. Ultimately, I decided on 10s for the fronts and 15s for the rear, both of which allow me to clear the calipers and to close up some of that wheel gap. I was very eager to see the wheel all bolted up, and getting to step back, I was not let down in the least. These rotors and calipers fill the wheel really nicely, and everything clears just the way it should, and overall, I'm ecstatic about how this brake package looks front and rear. I'm eager to see it on the ground, but first, let's talk about what this entire setup actually costs. So you've seen all the parts that you need, you've seen how easily those parts install, and you've seen how good the kit looks, but how does it perform? Well, I haven't driven the car yet, so I can't say, but if you're one to trust the internet, you'll see most people agree that this is a great kit for a street car that sees occasional track use. And I think that defines this build pretty well, and that's why I went with this kit. Well, that and because it's cheap. Now, what I spent to do this conversion and what I think you could spend to do this conversion are two very different numbers. I had all new parts everywhere I could, I had the calipers rebuilt and refinished, and ultimately I spent a couple thousand dollars on this setup, but that still comes in quite a bit less than an off-the-shelf big brake kit. And I think if you penny pinch, you can do this same conversion, front and rear, for under a thousand dollars. So let's talk about how to pull that off. So let's start with what I spent on this swap versus what I think that it could be done for. On the calipers, I spent $632 and another $577 to have them fully rebuilt with new seals and to have them repainted. I spent another $570 on the drilled M3 rotors for the front and the E38 rear rotors. Add to that another $400 for custom brake pads. Now the mounts and the lines cost $650 and there's no real way around that. There's also another $100 in machining the calipers so that they will clear 17 inch wheels. This brings us to a total of $2,929. But this can be done for a lot cheaper. My hometown junkyard charges just over $11 for a single caliper. And these calipers came on a lot of cars, so I don't think it's unfair to suggest you might find some in your local yard. Chances are the seals are fine, so add in 18 bucks for a can of caliper paint, and you can get the rotors from Rock Auto for just $144. The pads, front and rear, are another 29, and then the mounts and lines are of course 650 bucks once again. Add in the necessary machining and you'll sneak in at just under a thousand dollars. Now that cheaper route doesn't get you drilled brake rotors, but if you're penny pinching, I don't think that part really matters. And even if you spend what I spent, it's stark in contrast to the equivalent off the shelf Brembo four piston kit that will run you $3,700 per axle. That's over $7,000 for a four-wheel brake kit when we just built one for a fraction of the price. Now, I'm not going to say it's the exact same thing because it's not, but this is a pretty good bang for the buck. Now, before the car goes back down on the ground, there's one thing I want to fix under the car. There's still other things to do under here, but this one's important. This shock bolt might look like it's installed, but it's not. When this control arm went out to powder coating and then it came back, somewhere in there, the threads are completely stripped out. Now, I don't know how, but that's the case. This bolt's just kind of held in there by the pressure of the shock at the moment. So we're gonna pull this out and we're gonna repair this the right way. Let me show you how. 
To fix this, we're going to use what's called a time cert. And a time cert is a thread repair system that consists of four individual tools and a threaded insert. Now, the threaded insert is the heart of a time cert system, and it has threads on the outside and the inside. It's usually agreed on that it's the best way to repair threads inside of a hole versus something like a helicoil. And to install it, we're going to start by drilling out the messed up threads in the hole that we want to repair. I added some cutting fluid and got to work. Following the drilling process, a second tool is used to give us a seat for the time cert once it's fully installed. And then comes the tap. The threads of this tap match the threads on the outside of our time cert sleeve. Now the time cert itself is installed using a special tool. All of these tools are of course provided with the kit, but this tool is perhaps the most unique one. It will help us thread the time cert into place, and then it will form the inside threads once we fully seat it. And I know it's tiny, but there we have it. Completely repaired threads. It's a nice proper finish. Uh, the edge of the time certs below our mating surface, which is how it should be. We've got really nice fully formed threads in there. Hopefully you guys can see. So fully repaired and I'm happy with that. Now we can get this thing bolted back in and not have to worry about it anymore. And for the curious, a time cert can handle a lot of torque. I have no problem torquing this lower shock bolt down as tight as it needs to be. With the shock installed, we're finally ready to put the car back on the ground and get a good look at the wheel, tire, and brake package for the first time. There is one final step that I'd like to accomplish before we really get a good look though. As you can see, the car has gathered some serious dust here in the shop. In wanting to take care of the fresh paint on this thing, I think it's time to get it cleaned up with Turtle Wax's Hybrid Solutions Pro Slick and Slide Polymer Pure Wash. Obviously, there's no side glass in the car, so we're gonna have to take extra care to make sure we don't fill it up with water. But if there's any saving grace here, it's that the interior is gonna be completely redone anyway, so I'm not that worried about it. Instead, I'd like to make sure we're not letting contaminants sit on the paint longer than we have to. And if I'm being honest, I was also kind of looking for an excuse just to see this car in the sun for the first time in a long time. While cleaning the car up, it also gave me an opportunity to use Turtle Wax's new wheel and tire cleaner. While we haven't made any brake dust yet to really show this stuff off, there's still a lot of grease from the tire installation that's sitting on the aluminum lips. So after a bit of a spray and then a spray down, these things are looking better than ever. And now we're finally afforded the opportunity to see the wheel and tire package with the brakes hiding behind them and our cleaned up paint all for the first time. And this has been a long time coming and I'm finally feeling like this car is, well, nearing completion. There's still a ways yet to go and lots of odds and ends to solve, but step by step, we really are getting there. We're probably only one Saturday away from driving it. Now, if you've made it this far in the episode, I'm sure you do care about E36s or at least this project or I don't know, this channel, but I'm sure there are plenty of people wondering why I'm wasting time on this car instead of the Ferrari or Model A or other things that are more exciting. But honestly, this car here means more to me than either of those projects or any other project, period. This year will be 16 years of ownership with this car and it really is my first project. It's the first car I ever dove into and I'm really excited to be putting it back on the road and doing the best job I can because ultimately I want to make the best E36 I can conjure up. So if you're enjoying the series, leave a like on the episode. That kind of thing helps me, it helps the episode, it helps the series, it helps more BMW guys find this and they can follow along too. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you should. You won't want to miss the next episodes as we do put this thing together. And if you're enjoying the progress and you want to see more of this on Tuesday, leave a comment and maybe this weekend I'll thrash and try to get all the glass and the moldings and the trim back in it and we can take this thing for its first drive in a number of years. With all of the changes that we've made, I think that'd be pretty cool, but I gotta know if you guys want to see that. Otherwise, I might have to focus on the Ferrari or who knows what else. I never plan that far ahead. But no matter what, I appreciate the support. I'm excited for what's to come. Lots of projects all coming together at once. I'll catch you guys on Tuesday. I'll see you then.